Hello and welcome to another Godot game engine tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to implement pathfinding on a tile map using the Navigation 2D node. If you're new to Godot, be warned, I won't be explaining every little thing so you might feel a little bit lost. I recommend you start with my Godot 101 tutorials first. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so for this project we're going to have a, a simple map here with some mobs that are walking from a start position to a goal position. And using the Navigation 2D node, they're going to be able to find the shortest path from the start to the end. And we'll be able to remove blocks from the path and they'll find a new one that will let them get to where they're trying to go. Okay, let's look how this is set up. So in our main scene here, we've created a Navigation 2D node. And all we did with it is make a tile map the child. And I'm not going to go into how you create tile maps in this video. We can do that one in a separate one. But we have this tile map here with two, two different types of tiles, which I have gone and drawn these initial paths with. And also in the scene, we've created a start position and an end position using two uh, position 2D nodes with sprites attached to them uh, to give them something to see. And then we have a mob timer that's just going to, all this does is control how often the mobs spawn at the start position. I have that set to half a second right now, and it's an auto start so that it just repeats over and over again. So this is the setup, and our mob is just a sprite. I've just created a sprite of the little army guy, and that's it. So the way that Nav2D nodes work is they need to have a shape attached to them. Just like with a collision body, you need to have the collision shape attached to it. You need to have a shape attached to this Navigation 2D. And that's usually done with a Navigation Polygon instance. Right, so just as an example, I could add a child here to the nav, and now I have a polygon instance which needs to have its shape defined. So I can say, so you can either say new navigation polygon, or you can go up here to these buttons up here which let you create a new polygon from scratch. So if I click the little pencil and I start clicking out here, it's going to say, do you want me to create a polygon here? Say yes, and then you can draw points where, you know, wherever you want and connect them up and this becomes your navigation polygon and using the little red button here you can adjust these you can uh, you can insert if you see the pop-up here you can split the segment using control and left mouse button so if I click control in here I can insert a new point in there and so depending on how you're set up you might draw your navigation polygon to uh, to cover whatever your area that you want to navigate is. And now any node that's inside of here can find a path from any point inside the polygon to any other point inside the polygon. And that all works fine for a static setup. But because we have a map here, our tile map that we want to be able to add and remove tiles, I want the navigation polygon to basically be all the brown road tiles and so as I add and remove them the shape of this polygon is going to change and so we want that to be dynamic and so we're going to tie that into the tile map. So let's delete this polygon we don't actually want to do it that way and so the way that we do this is when we set up our tile map or sorry when we set up our tile set right here's my tile set I have the grass tile and I have the brown road tile okay and on the brown road tile I've added a navigation polygon as a child and so this navigation polygon covers the the tile and you're gonna get an error here because it's gonna tell you that a navigation polygon needs to be a child or grandchild to a navigation 2d node and so by itself it doesn't work but when we have it here in the in the tile map it will be under a nav 2d so it's going to work fine now the only thing you need to be careful of is 
since these tiles are going to be laid in the map, they're going to be side by side. And so this navigation polygon needs to connect to the one of the tile next to it. And that means that you need to size these properly. So right now I have snapping on on the grid. If I turn snapping off, you can see I could grab the corners and you know size this however I wanted. And the problem will be if, if you are not exactly on the borders of the tile, if you're sticking over a little bit this way or sticking over a little bit this way, the navigation will not work. So you need to turn on snap and make sure that you are exactly matching the size of the tile that you're using so that when they are adjacent, they will line up properly. If you have starting to have problems with your navigation working, that's the first place to look is you might not have your, uh, your snap grid on and you don't have your polygon covering the edges of the tile. Okay, so we take these two tiles, we export this as our tile set, and that's the tile set we use in our tile map node. And so I have tile number zero, which is the grass, and I have tile number one, which is the road. So here's the start of our main scenes code. We are preloading the mob scene so that we can instance it. We have a few variables pointing to uh, the nodes that we need to reference. Uh, in the case of the positions, we're just getting the positions for the start and end so that we can spawn the mobs at the right position. Uh, we're going to set process input to true so that we can detect the mouse clicks. And in the input function, this is where we're going to do that. So if the mouse button is clicked, or if a mouse button is clicked, the first thing we do is we use the world to map function to convert from the mouse coordinates to map coordinates. So we basically get what tile we have clicked on. And then if you clicked the left mouse button, we're going to put, we're going to set the cell to the road tile. If you click the right, right mouse button, we're going to set the tile to the grass tile. And then when you let go of the mouse button, we've created a, a custom signal here called map update. And we're going to emit that signal, which all of the mobs are going to listen for. And if they hear that signal, they're going to know that the map has changed and they need to update their path. And then finally, we have whenever our mob timer times out, we're going to instance a mob set its position to the start position, and that's all we have so far. So here's our mob code. So I have a, a speed variable so we can control how fast they move. Nav is going to refer to the navigation 2D node, which we're going to have to tell the mob about when it spawns. Path will be an array just holding the points that it needs to travel through. This is what you get back from navigation is a list of path of path points to travel through and then we're also going to want to be able to set our goal position so we know where we're traveling to so that's it so now where do we start well first we need to be able to set our navigation and so it's null by default but when we set it we're going to want to do a couple of things so we're going to use a set get here and we're going to make a function called set navigation or set nav and set nav is going to be passed some new navigation right so in theory you could have multiple multiple navigation nodes that the sprite is traveling between and whenever you want to change it you're going to send it a new one so we'll set our nav to the new nav and whenever we get a new navigation we're going to want to update the path but we're also going to want to update the path whenever it changes. So we're going to make a function called update path. And what update path is going to do is calculate its new path. And you do that by taking the navigation node, right, which we have set, and you use the get simple path um, method on it. And what that does is you pass it a the position you want to start at. And so that's going to be our whatever our current position is, where you want to travel to, and then a true or false, which is 
which has to do with path optimization. So I'm going to set this to false, and we can we can look at what it does when you set it to true once we have it working. Okay. And now if our path size uh, returns zero, that means we either have reached the destination, so there's no more points to travel through, or it means we are stuck somewhere where there's no path to the goal, right? If there's no way to get from your start position to your end position, you will get an empty path returned. And so if that happens because we've, you know, trapped a node somewhere because we removed the road it was on, uh, we're going to queue free. So we just want the mobs to disappear when they've reached the end. And if they ever get stuck somewhere they can't move, we'll just, we'll just have them be deleted. Okay. So now our mob has its path that it needs to travel. And now we need to have it follow that path. So let's go back over to our main real quick. And when we spawn the node here, we're going to use those functions we just set up. So we're going to set the mob's goal to the end position. We're going to set the mob's nav to our nav node, right? And because we used a set get, it's going to run that update path code. And then finally, we want to connect our map update sig signal to the mob and have it run the update path function whenever it does. So whenever the mob hears the map update signal, it's going to update path. So now back over on our mob, we just need to decide what to do with our path. So again, our path is going to be an array of points to travel through. So as we are processing, we need to check if, so if path size is greater than one, then we have at least one more path, you know, one more path node to travel to. And so we need to figure out the distance to that. So we're going to get our position and find out the distance to path zero. Right, first first one in the list. So the next the next one, because we're basically going to be removing we're going to be removing items from the path as we reach them. Right. So the next node we need to travel to is a certain distance away. And the reason we do that is so that we can uh, interpolate the movement and move at the steady speed to that point. So if the distance is greater than two, which means we've gotten really close. Right, that's going to be close enough, and you can adjust that as well. It's uh, depending on the size of your sprite that you're moving, and the size of the map that you're moving on. You can adjust that to get uh, to get smoother transitions between different nodes. But this one works fine for the speed and size that we are using. So we're going to set our position to whatever our current position is, and then we're just going to do a linear interpolation to. Uh, path zero, the place we're going. So between the place we are and the place we're going, uh, interpolated by the speed that we want to travel at times delta divided by d. Right, and so that way we'll move whatever fraction it takes to keep the speed steady. Otherwise, if we've gotten that close, then we will remove path zero. Right, and so then we'll be ready to process the next one. And again, if uh, path size is, if we've reached it, then we can queue free. Because we've reached the final node, so we are there. Okay, and so that should do it for the code for the mob. And now we're ready to try it out. So here come our mobs spawning, and they are now calculating their path along the navigation 2D. And if we remove a path, they're going to try and find whatever their next closest one is. Remove that, make them go around. As you change it, you'll see them find Whichever ones they can will find the closest path that they can. 
We just made this guy go all the way back around. Hopefully you get the idea. Navigation 2D is a really powerful node. There's a lot you can do with it. This is just one example that could be applied to games like tower defense games, strategy games where you have a lot of units needed and travel around a changing map. So thanks for watching. Please check below for the source code if you want to try the project out yourself. And I will see you in another video.